Hey everyone, welcome back to Endless Money Pits. This is a 2008 Yamaha XT250, and today I'll show you how to replace a brake caliper. I'll be demonstrating on the rear, but the front is actually a lot easier to remove from the bike, and the rest of the procedure would be the same. The rear caliper on this bike is compressing the brake pads unevenly, and one of the guide pins appears to have seized and broken apart the last time somebody tried to remove it, so we've decided to replace the caliper altogether. I'll also have to bleed the brake fluid when I'm done, but none of this is too hard, so let's get to it. Here are the tools that I used for this job. Impact wrench, impact driver, 19mm socket, Phillips number 2, plastic mallet, torque wrench, two 14mm wrenches, 8mm wrench, 8mm ratcheting wrench, and a tape measure. For this job I also needed a bungee cord, a rag, padded gloves, safety glasses, wood blocks, shop towels, rubber gloves, silicone tubing, a plastic container, dot four brake fluid, a stool, a motorcycle stand, a copper crush washer, and a new brake caliper. There are links in the description for everything I used. I'll start by putting the bike on a stand to get the rear wheel off the ground. I used a couple wood blocks to support the rear wheel as I removed the axle. If you need a wrench to keep the other end from spinning, it's a 22 millimeter. The brake caliper is also secured by the axle, so I used a bungee cord to support it. Get a container ready to catch the brake fluid, then using a couple 14mm wrenches, the mount to help hold the caliper, and a little patience, remove the brake line. After breaking it loose, I probably could have twisted the caliper the rest of the way off the brake line instead of turning the nut, but sometimes I accidentally do things the hard way. Set the brake line aside pointed up so it doesn't leak all its fluid. Make sure to remove the old crush washer, remove the plastic cap from the new caliper, and install a new crush washer before reattaching the brake line. Another eighth of a turn felt like enough to compress the washer for a good seal. The second nut from the caliper can be turned to relieve any twist from the brake line. Don't forget to remove the shipping spacer from between the brake pads. If the brake disc won't fit between the pads, you might need to pry them apart slightly. Install the axle with chain tensioner as shown. and slip the chain over the rear sprocket while making sure it hasn't come off the front sprocket. Remove any grease from the axle threads before installing the other chain tensioner and washer, and loosely install the nut.
To keep the wheel in alignment while adjusting the chain, turn the chain tensioners equally so that the numbers match until the chain slack is between 40 and 45 millimeters, measured at the lower portion of the chain, halfway between the sprockets. That's an inch and a half of play. It should be 1.57 to 1.77 inches. I think that was 40 millimeters to 45 millimeters. But we're at the end of the adjuster here. So we're gonna need a new chain and the sprockets are worn out too. I don't know about the front one, but the back one is. So check back for that video in the not too distant future. When the chain slack is within spec, torque the axle nut to 62 foot pounds. Now it's time to bleed the brake fluid to make sure there's no air in the line. I'll start by removing the cover from the brake fluid reservoir. I topped off the reservoir with new fluid, but you could argue it would be better to remove most of the old fluid first to reduce contaminating the new fluid. I didn't make these holes big enough and it caused me to spill some fluid, so make the holes bigger than this or just remove the foil altogether. Remove the rubber cap from the bleed screw, put a wrench on it, and run a hose down to a container for catching the old fluid. Use one hand to build pressure in the brake lever, then slightly open the bleed screw with the other hand letting out a small amount of fluid, close the bleed screw, and repeat. There was a lot of air in the line from being disconnected, so it took a few tries before I could feel any pressure or see any fluid coming out. Make sure to keep adding fluid to the reservoir to keep air from getting sucked into the line, and repeat the process until new fluid starts coming out from the bleed screw. It can be hard to tell the difference between the old fluid and the new fluid, but you probably shouldn't need to refill the reservoir more than four or five times to clear out any bubbles and all the old fluid. Finish with the fluid level above the low mark on the reservoir, but leave room for the rubber diaphragm on top. Make sure to wipe off any moisture before reinstalling these parts. These only fit together one way. This bike showed up here in pretty rough condition, and I've made a bunch of videos about fixing it up, so check those out before you go. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe for more of the best DIY videos on the internet. And until next time, just keep throwing money at it. <laughs>